Hello everyone. I'm very happy to meet you all through this video. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to use the dotting tools and some basic patterns that you can use to create a dot mandala. Here is a set of eight tools. Now, let me choose a tool from here. Keep the remaining aside. And I'm going to take an acrylic color. This is magenta. Now, when you start dot painting and you have a dotting tool, only the tip of the tool should touch the paint. You don't put the entire tool into the paint and then dot on the surface. See, for example, let me show you now. This is the tool that I'm going to use to dot paint on this paper. Now here is the acrylic color. I'll only gently touch it. And if you see on the sides, there are no paint at all. This is how you need to pick up the paint and gently touch the surface. You don't press the tool hard on the surface, then the dot won't come perfectly. So I repeat the process. The tip of the tool should be dipped in the paint and gently touch the surface. Some people will even say this as kissing the surface. And I would personally say like how you touch a newborn. You don't touch the newborn pressing so hard, no. You gently touch the newborn, right? So like that, only the tip of the tool should touch the paint and gently touch the surface. So you then get perfect dots. With the same tool, I can create different sized dots as well. How do I do it? Now, instead of dipping only the tip of the tool, I'll dip the tool a little bit more. So now I pick up more amount of paint. Look at the size of these two dots. This is smaller, this is bigger. And I have used the same tool. So how can I produce different sized dots with the same tool? Only by picking less paint and more paint. That's the only difference. So in these three dots, I only dipped the tip of the tool into the paint. But for this particular dot, I dipped even more. 2 mm probably, I think. I have not measured it anyway. So 2 mm more into the paint. So I could pick up more paint. And when I dotted, it produced a bigger dot. So with the same tool, you can produce different sized dots and that depends on the amount of paint you pick up with the tool. For all the beginners who want to dot, the first thing that I would suggest is in the set of eight tools, pick up each and every tool and draw a line, start dotting on the entire line. So this way you get to practice how each tool works and what is the size of the a dot that is produced by each tool in that set of eight. So once you are done with that set of eight tools, the next is to use the set of five. Now, the set of five tools. These are actually nail art tools, but I use it for dotting. Most of the dot mandala artists use it for dotting. Now, whenever you want to produce tiny dots, you can certainly use the set of five tools. Now let me just show you how to dot using this nail art tool. As usual, dip only the ball into the paint and then keep a dot. Now the difference between this tool and this tool is, when I dot using this tool, I keep the tool straight, vertical. However, when I dot using this nail art tool, I don't keep it like this. I keep it slanting, like how you hold a pencil or a pen. That's how you hold this dotting tool. And again, you can produce different sized dots. Let me just show you as an example. See, if you closely look at these dots, I have used the same tool and the same ball side of it but look at the size of the dots, it differs. 
so the size of the dots produced by the same tool same side differs only because of the amount of paint that i have picked up at the time of dotting now look at this it's the same tool i'm picking up the paint i'll dot here so that you will see the difference when i start dotting the dot is bigger and i'll keep two three consecutive dots see what happens now as i start keeping the consecutive dots the size of the dots keeps reducing it gets smaller and smaller so i majorly use the set of five tools for a technique called walking the dots which i just did see when i say walking the dots with any tool which has a ball i'll pick up the paint once but quickly produce consecutive dots this is actually called as walking the dots so when you walk the dots always the first dot is bigger and consecutively it becomes smaller and smaller so basically the set of five tools nail art tools they are used for producing tiny dots and also for walking the dots now i'll tell you a very simple pattern using these two tools for you to practice on so first what i'll do is i'll use this bigger tool basically and keep three dots here and every time you dot you have to pick up the paint maybe i'll keep one more dot now i'll use this tool and keep four dots around this main dot so first i'll keep a top dot then i'll keep a dot at the bottom and the next the right side and on the left so i repeat top bottom right and left So when you practice this pattern on any sketchbook paper of your choice you know make sure the dots between the main dot and the top bottom right left dots are equal look at the space here they are almost if not exactly similar they are almost similar it shouldn't have a drastic change like for example i'll show you like this here you keep a top dot and if you keep a bottom dot like this then there is a drastic change between the space between the main dot and the top dot and the main dot and the bottom dot so look at here the space is more here the space is very less and the outcome may not be as good as it is here let me just show you here i intentionally kept it like this so now what happened is So here I made sure that it is on the four directions okay so though I have not given uh, any measurements though I have not measured but I still could um, fairly decently manage to keep four dots in four direction and the space is also almost equal here neither the space is equal nor I have maintained the four directions properly So when you keep it like this the outcome is not going to be as nice as it is here. So when you dot make sure the spacing is almost equal. So once you are comfortable keeping four dots around the main dot the next thing that you can do is to practice eight dots around the main dot. Let me show you an example. Here I am keeping the main dot. Now I am going to keep eight dots around this dot so first top dot second bottom dot right left now top right and bottom right so let me keep that here top right bottom right and then top left and bottom left so top left then bottom left so practice eight dots around the main dot 
so once you are comfortable with this we can move on to the next so the next thing that you can practice is one main dot and 12 dots around that so let me keep the main dot now now since i have to keep 12 dots around this i am choosing a relatively smaller tool so what i'll do is a top dot a bottom dot right and left so now i have to keep two dots in between any two so that total comes to 12 so when you keep two dots in between these two make sure the spacing is not too different from each other so they should be almost equal so that the output looks really good and if right at the beginning the spacing is not proper that's absolutely fine it only means you have to practice a little more you can practice this pattern next so now if you ask me are we going to use these patterns to create mandala maybe yes maybe no but we are doing this as a practice so that you get to understand what it means to maintain equal spacing between dots now one more pattern for you to practice dotting a little better so i'm using this tool and i drew a circle here okay i'm going to keep a dot in the center using this tool let me do that first i've kept a dot here and then in that set of eight tools there were three plain tools so out of which this is the medium one so using that I am keeping 8 dots around this main dot. So I am keeping the 4th dot now. This is 5, this is 6, this is 7 and this is 8. So once I am done with this, the next one is I am using this nail art tool to keep 2 tiny dots in between. So here is the acrylic color. I'll dip the tiny ball side into the paint just once and keep two consecutive dots. I don't know if it is visible in the video. Let me show you closer. See, two tiny dots. So let's do this for all the other eight sides. This is just for practice. So that when you start drawing a full-fledged mandala, the outcome would be more beautiful. Now for the next pattern, again there is a circle. I already drew it here. Now I'm going to keep a center dot using this tool. So I've kept a center dot now. Now around this center dot, I'm going to keep eight dots using this tool. One, two, three, four, five, six seven and eight so i have kept eight dots now the next step is to keep eight more dots but like this outside the circle line but in between the two so again we'll have to keep eight dots i have kept two now the third one fourth fifth six seven eight so these are some of the very basic patterns that you can practice more and more and more so that you gain a lot of expertise in using the tool and in producing the dots then you can move on to making a perfect dot mandala i'll now tell you about one of the uh, beautiful pattern and I personally love that pattern so much that I never have finished a mandala without this. Let me tell you what exactly it is. So here I am keeping the first dot using this tool. And using the smaller tool, I'm going to keep just one top dot. And if you observe, there is not much of a space between this main dot and the top dot. They are closer to each other. Okay. Now using this tool, metal tool, 
the set of four tools that I showed you, out of which this is the smaller tool, the smallest one, not just smaller. Now the next step is, I'm going to use this metal tool and this is part of the set of four tools here and this is the smallest. I'll take the smallest tools now. I'll take the smallest tool now and when you look at the smallest tool, here two sides are there and one side the ball is bigger, the other side the ball is smaller. I will use the small ball side now. So what I'll do is, I'll dip it into the paint and then walk the dots in a curved manner. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then do it for the other side as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look how beautiful it looks. Now the same pattern, I'll do it with a little bit of a variation. I'll keep the main dot. Now I'll keep top dot. But if you observe between the main dot and the top dot, there is a lot of space. Now using this tool, I'll pick up the paint and follow the same pattern. The same pattern, but it looks so different because of the space between the main dot and the top dot. The tools did not change and the amount of paint that I picked up did not change. The only difference is the space between the main dot and the top dot. Now the same pattern, I can do two layers of walking the dots. This is actually called as walking the dots. I told you already, right? Now I can do two layers, three layers, how many ever layers you want actually. Now I'm just going to show you two layers and uh, improving it with three layers and four layers is completely up to you and your practice. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'll keep the main dot with this tool. So here I'm keeping the main dot and then I'm going to keep two top dots for doing two layers of walking the dot. See when you do multiple layers of walking the dots, it generally goes from smaller to bigger. So the first layer top dot will be smaller, the second will be slightly bigger and the third layer if you keep it will be even more bigger. So that's how I have chosen the tools. Now I am keeping the first top dot. Now I am going to keep the second top dot. See if you look at the first top dot is little smaller and the second top dot is little bigger. So that's how generally people do. And that's how when you do it, the outcome of this pattern is going to look really nice. So the first layer top dot is smaller, second is bigger. So for walking the dots, for the first layer, I have chosen this tool where the ball is a little smaller. And for the second layer, I have chosen this one. The ball is a little bigger when you compare. So now I'm going to walk the dots. So now first layer is done. I'm going to walk the dots second layer. Now what happens is, let me tell you the challenge that I personally faced when I started doing two layers. I mean multiple layers of walking the dots. See for the first layer when I walk the dots, the distance between the top dot and the place where I have to finish it was shorter. So any tool that I picked up, even if I picked up a little amount of paint, it was enough. But when I move on to subsequent layers, the place where the top dot is and the place where you have to end it is quite far. So if you dip this tool once in the paint, it's not going to be enough. So what I generally do is, I'll dot once and then I pick up the paint once again. Now I'll start walking so that I'll have paint until the end. So I repeat this side, I'll pick up the paint dot once, I'll pick up paint again and then walk the dots. So when you do multiple layers of walking the dots, this is how you do it. And there is something called swipes or few people call it as swooshes also. Let me tell you how to do that. So here I have the smallest metal tool and uh, 
I am opting to dip the bigger ball side into the paint. So I have picked up the paint. So I'll dot here. I won't lift the tool from the surface, but then drag it. This is called a straight swipe. I have dragged it in a straight manner. Now you can also keep a curved swipe. It's like this. You drag it in a curved fashion. See, I'll keep it here. This forms the pattern. This is another majorly used filler patterns. This is a straight swipe and this is a side swipe. See, at times when you have to produce a longer straight swipes or longer side swipes, I do this also. Keep a plumpy dot with a lot of paint in it. Okay. And then take a nail art tool. You can manually drag it to look like a swipe. Let me do it now. See here I am dragging it to form a line. And then in the sides I will adjust a little. See now this looks like a straight swipe. So you can keep a plumpy dot and manually drag it to a swipe as well. Whatever pattern you have listened to and practiced in this video will be more than enough for you to create thousands of beautiful mandalas. I'm sure all of you loved watching this video. Thank you for watching.